It's been one week now since the deadly massacre at an El Paso Walmart that left 22 people dead and injured 26 others. The people of that city are going through dark days. They're grieving and trying to move forward. Our Kim Molestine has been covering the story since it happened and looks back on the difficult week starting with today's rally. You know, it's been a very long week for the people of El Paso. This memorial has grown immensely. It's about the length of a football field now. It's also a clear reminder of just how much pain this community is going through. We shall overcome. A rally in March packed with emotion and grief, clearly reflected in each person that walked. LULAC president and Dallasite Domingo Garcia joined presidential candidate Beto O'Rourke to champion a community left shattered by a mass murder. Let's stop this violence. It hurt all of us. It's heartbreaking and people are mourning. That morning turned to anger when news broke that the suspected shooter came here from Allen, Texas to carry out the attack. He told investigators he was targeting Mexicans. He is eligible for the death penalty. Uh, we will seek the death penalty. Then midweek came the controversial presidential visit. Supporters and opponents of Donald Trump clashed outside the memorial, making their voices heard. Are you a white supremacist? Yes, sir. Actually, I'm a United sir, States sir, Marine, sir. and you're a f idiot. Sir. President Donald Trump visited with the victims and first responders, and when he left, all the attention was once again on the victims and their families. He's he's a hero. He's the reason why my daughter and my mother-in-law are here today, and I can never ever. Tell him thank you for it. She didn't deserve to die the way she did. 22 crosses, 22 lives honored at the site of the memorial, which became the place where heavy hearts met compassion. Across the city, the motto, El Paso Strong, reminding everyone that this city will overcome the greatest tragedy they've ever seen. Right now, it's time for mourning, time for coming together, trying it for peace, you know, for love. I'm sorry that this happened to those families. I'm sorry that that happened to this community. Um, El Paso is a strong community, and we'll work together to, uh, to get through this. And as we wrap up our weeks long coverage here in El Paso, I'd like to share a personal note with you. This is a place that I came to know very well when I came to start my career here. I wasn't born here, I wasn't raised here, but when I arrived here in El Paso, the people of this community, they accepted me with open arms and they welcomed me with a lot of love. It's the place where I met my wife, where I have many close friends and people who I consider to be like family to me. And I can tell you that before it became a hashtag, before it was printed on t-shirts, El Paso has always been strong. And somehow, they'll figure out how to get through this one as well. We're in El Paso, Ken Molestina, CBS 11 News. Eric.